What's up guys, it's Ivan and in this video, I am going to read a successful statement of purpose for the PhD in Biophysics at UC Berkeley. Before we get into the video, I do want to remind you that I offer a statement of purpose review service on the freelance platform called Fiverr, which is linked down below in the description. With this service, I will provide constructive feedback to help you get into your dream graduate school. Over the past two years, I have been working with over 200 clients and many of them have attained successful admissions to their dream graduate program and so I want to help you reach that goal. As a child I wanted to be a t-rex. I desisted however upon learning that dinosaurs could not investigate themselves. Hoping to understand how they came to be I was constantly discussing the details of their lives with my family. In the search for deeper explanations I dove into progressively lower levels of organization from organisms to cells to atoms. In this pursuit I realized that my initial interest in dinosaurs had instilled in me a profound drive to understand the building blocks of life. This led me to study biology, overcoming social cultural factors that make it an unusual career in developing countries like Peru. Several research experiences later, I realized that my passion for understanding life specifically centers on unraveling how protein structure determines function. I am now ready and more eager than ever to pursue a career in structural biology. Alright, so the introduction is actually really unique because it doesn't really Really follow what I normally tell people to do. Instead, it starts off with a narrative, which is another way that you can start your introduction. But make sure that if you start your narrative, you don't tell your whole life story. With this applicant, we actually learn a lot about who she is in a small paragraph. So her initial statement about wanting to be a T-Rex when she was smaller led really to us understanding what she really wants to study. I want you to, I want to point out that she did not go into a whole life story story about being a T-Rex and about her childhood. She simply stated that she wanted to be a T-Rex when she was younger and how that led to her research interest in learning about structural biology. And so she mentions a couple of things that are really interesting. So she mentions that she studied biology, that she's from Peru, that she must be of some like, you know, either first generation low income status because she mentions social cultural factors. She mentions how she conducted seven several research experiences, which to me as a reader indicates that she's going to go through each of her research experiences in the rest of the statement of purpose. At the end, then she mentions that she wants to have a career as a structural biologist, right? And so that's all we know. So typically, I like applicants to mention the school they are applying to, the program they're applying to, their career goal, and why they're choosing that program. Obviously, this applicant did something differently, but it still works for her because we know that she's going to talk more about her experiences with research that have led to her PhD program. I have been engaged in research since my first year at Universidad Peruana Cayetana Heredia, UPCH. Fascinated by how plants and bacteria adapt to extreme environments and its implications on the emergence of life on primitive earth, I first explored astrobiology. I conducted literature-based research for Peru's Astrobiology Association, which I later presented at Peru's International Science scientific meeting, ECI. Given that ECI is the country's largest scientific conference, I was thrilled to interact with other students and professors so early in my career. In parallel, I joined Professor ABC's laboratory in January 2016, where I still work as a research assistant. Our group aims to better understand the mechanisms of antibiotic resistance of mycobacterium tuberculosis using bioinformatics and molecular biology approaches. Given my outstanding performance during a training project. I was selected by Professor ABC to represent the lab in a training research exchange with Professor DEF's lab at Pennsylvania State University. There, I analyzed RNA sequence data from Myceria dubia and Tinea solium to identify novel transcripts and genes expressed at high temperatures. As the first time doing research abroad, this experience helped me hone my communication skills and have a broader perspective about science. Moreover, armed with my new knowledge, I organized a workshop to teach others what I had learned and wrote a section for an equipment grant for the Peruvian NSF, which allowed us to buy the first sequencer in our university. With it, we started transcriptomics in the ABC lab, for which I designed the standard analysis workflow and have helped supervise several undergraduate and master's projects. So in this next paragraph, the applicant talks about her research experiences as an undergraduate student. So she starts off by mentioning the name of where she did the research. That's really important. Give context 
context to the reader about where you conducted the research, name the lab. She also mentions several professors. In this case, she wants to keep it anonymous, so she uses like ABC and stuff like that. But in your work, I want you to mention the actual professors you worked with. Then she does a really good job of explaining what type of work she did. So when you're explaining your research experiences, make sure you mention the project topic, the questions, the methodology, the result or findings, and the implications. And this scholar does a really good job of doing that. So she mentions what the topic was, how she conducted the research, and then the implications. She mentions a lot about the implications because she did really great work beyond the initial experience. She talks about being the only person from her lab to go to a, a research abroad experience at Penn State um, University. She talks about how that led to her writing an NSF grant in Peru that allowed her to bring some new technology to her lab, which she le later led and helped out other undergraduate and master's students. And so this scholar does a really good job of explaining her undergraduate experiences and how they built on each other. And she does this succinctly, but also detailed. So make sure you do the exact same thing. Although I was enjoying my bioinformatics research, I felt the need for a more in-depth look at how living things work. The chemistry and biochemistry courses I took during my first three years of college reignited my passion to think about how inner atoms could ultimately form living creatures. Thus, I requested Professor ABC a project in which I could focus on understanding tuberculosis from a mechanistic perspective. I decided to analyze the emergence of compensatory mutations in 469M tuberculosis genomes, a concept previously discussed in the lab but never addressed from a genomic and structural perspective. In bacteria, compensatory mutations arise to overcome a fitness loss caused by a previous refumpin, resistance conferring mutation. I found 35 punitive novel compensatory mutations, six of which constitute strong candidates for fitness recovery by their position on the protein structure. This work became my first author publication and the core of my Lysentian of Biology degree, which I defended with honors. Later, I presented it at the undergraduate conference BioAccess 2020. In this next paragraph, the author does a really good job of explaining another research experience, but she does a good job of connecting it to her previous paragraphs. So she ties in why she wants to do structural biology, which is a career goal. And she mentions how a conversation in her previous lab work led to this new project. Then she explains the topic of the project and how she went about finding answers to the projects and the result of that project. Finally, she ends with the implications. She has a first author publication as well as a conference presentation. So I want you to do the same exact thing in your statement of purpose. Something to know is that I want you to connect every one of your paragraphs to each other. They should build on each other, telling the chronologically ordered um, story of why you want to get a PhD or any graduate degree. This project taught me how to do science, from understanding concepts and designing analyses to developing soft skills such as time, project, and team management. Given that the manuscript was initially rejected, this experience taught me to understand and accept critiques and to use them as an impulse to improve my science. With the help of my supervisor, I redesigned our analyses to include better ways to show our results and further discuss the impact of the project. Dealing with the paper's rejection also taught me taught a lot from a personal perspective as I learned to be more resilient and humbler. Although I realized that contrary to what I had thought, science does not know perfection as it constantly reconstructed by new work and discussions. So in this paragraph, the author talks about their journey with writing a journal article and dealing with rejection. As a PhD student and future professor, this applicant is going to have to deal with constant critique and constant feedback. And so this gives the reader a good idea of how strong they are as a potential PhD student, but also potential scholar in the field and how they're willing to take some feedback and improve their practice to actually get a publication. On my fourth year of college, I met Professor GHI, a collaborator of Professor ABC's. He introduced me to molecular dynamics, MD, which perfectly aligned with my desire to study molecules closely. Learning in class and in my free time, I helped Professor GHI build a computational tool to simulate a flexible material called nanocomposite. He encouraged me to further develop my bioinformatics skills while thinking deeply about the simulated system's physical chemistry. We also conducted an MD workshop for high school and university students. Altogether, our discussions made me realize structural biology was the right field to reconcile my competing interest in wet and dry labs. It would also allow me to understand the atomic basis of proteins while putting it into a functional context. So in this next paragraph, the author does a really good job of telling the reader how all 
all of their experiences beforehand built to what they want to study at the PhD level. They talk about collaborating with another researcher, another professor at their institution and how that collaboration led to them really um, focusing on structural biology and what they wanted to pursue in the future beyond undergrad. And this obviously relates to what their career goal is because in their introduction, they did mention they wanted to study structural biology. And so this paragraph right here really sets the tone of what they want to pursue at the PhD level. I had the opportunity to work directly on structural biology with the research experience for Peruvian undergraduate e REPU program in 2019. I was selected nationally for a summer internship at Vanderbilt University where I worked in Professor JKL's lab on the regulation of coat protein complex I, COPI assembly. Copi coated vesicles mediate the transfer of cargo molecules from Golgi to the ER and are controlled by ARF, a GTP binding protein. I study the role of GLO3, an essential yeast ARF, GSP, GT, PASE activating protein, which binds directly to Copi's coats subunit and is thought to regulate the coats formation. I sought to uncover protein interactions between the coats subunit, ARF, and GLO3. For this, I expressed GLO3's functional domain, ARF, and the N terminus of CoPI and this term, and purified them to perform pull down assays. I also learned protein crystallization by growing GLO3's gap crystals. Our experiments revealed that GLO3's gap domain is sufficient to bind ARF, GDP, and GTP, and confirmed a direct interaction between COPI, ARF, and, and GLO3's GAP. Our pull downs also suggested that G GOPI enhanced the interaction between GLO3 and ARF. This project provided initial evidence of a direct interaction between ARF and this symbol, which is being further explored in the JKL lab, along with GLO3's regulatory role. As the COPI coat is conserved from the yeast to humans, uncovering its regulation mechanisms will ultimately reveal how COPI can mediate diverse vital trafficking events. This internship was a wonderful opportunity as I not only engaged in top-notch research but also enjoyed Professor JKL's mentoring and graduate classes, Vanderbilt seminars, and REPU's journal clubs. Further, this rich academic environment reaffirmed my desire to pursue an academic career in structural biology. In this paragraph, the author describes a summer research opportunity that they engaged in, in which they were able to learn more about structural biology in the research field. This is really important for this statement of purpose because the applicants applying to a PhD. And as you can see throughout all of their experiences, they're all research related. The author does a really good job of explaining exactly what they did in their summer research. So they talked about the topic they were exploring, how they explored that topic, and they mentioned a lot of the findings and how those findings led to further experiments in that lab. They also mentioned a couple of the components of the program, such as taking graduate classes, getting involved in a journal club, things that you know allow the reader, the committee, to visualize this applicant as a PhD student. And so I want you to do the same thing when you are writing about your research experiences. My aim as a scientist is to improve our mechanistic understanding of fundamental processes, a beings and I believe UC Berkeley is the ideal place for me to pursue this goal. The biophysics graduate group will strengthen my skills in determining and interpreting protein structure and function. Moreover, Berkeley's diverse community and wide career development opportunities will enrich my previous experience of teaching and mentorship. Given my experience with vesicle trafficking, I would be particularly excited to study the mechanisms of ESCRT pathway or lysosomal regulation with Professor One and to examine the role of SAC proteins in the translocation of carbon go to the ER with Professor Two. I would be equally delighted to study microtubules, dynamics, and interactions with Professor Three. I believe my extensive experience in bioinformatics will enable me to learn cryo-EM or x-ray methods and develop new data processing pipelines with relative ease. Furthermore, I believe the program's interdisciplinary approach will greatly benefit from my own strong and varied experiences and will further challenge me to pose and solve scientific questions creatively. Thus, I am convinced that pursuing a PhD in biophysics at UC Berkeley is the best possible step to acquire the skills of a great structural biologist. Whilst this direction is certainly different from becoming the dinosaur I once wanted to be, a career at Berkeley will skyrocket my journey to contribute to science as a mentor and professor I aspire to be. This last paragraph is their why this program, why this institution paragraph. And the author does a really good job of mentioning three professors they want to work with. Obviously here they redact the name
names of the professors. They may, they name a professor one, professor two, professor three. But when you are writing your why this, why this program, why this institution paragraph, you want to mention the name of the professor and why that professor's expertise and how their expertise is going to help you achieve your research and career goals. The author again reiterates what their career goal is. They want to become a professor and a mentor and lead their own lab in this topic. They also mention briefly what they're going to bring to the program and the institution as well as the cohort. And they talk about their varied research experiences that they can contribute to the lab. And so I want you to tell the committee what you will bring, what unique perspectives, what unique skill sets you will bring to the program, the cohort, and the lab. All right, scholars, I hope this video helps you gain a better idea of how to write a statement of purpose for graduate school, specifically a PhD program. If you're interested in seeing more examples like these to better support your writing of your statement of purpose, click on this playlist up here, and that will direct you to the other videos that I have made about statement of purpose writing. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next video.